D2 CSGO team have made some pretty big changes in this offseason, or at least they are set to make those changes, with Alexi B and Jax making their way out of the team, and Hooksy, previously of Copenhagen Flames, and JKS, most recently of Complexity, coming into the team. Now, you might be asking yourself the question, are these moves going to be any good? Don't worry, your boy Dumps has got you. My name is King Demps and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about these changes and we're going to start off with JKS. Now JKS was the first person that it was rumoured that G2 were going to be bringing into the team. JKS has kind of been floating around for a long time now. He was benched, um, I think it was back in November of 2021 from Complexity. So he spent a good like eight months plus without a team now. Um, or at least, you know, not on the starting roster of anywhere. But obviously, we remember that most recently he won that IEM at Katowice with FaZe as a stand-in. Now, in general, JKS is a player, is like a little bit more of a passive player. Back when he was playing for Renegades, yeah, the boys, um, he was a guy who played a lot of the anchor roles. He was generally more of a late-round player on T side, um, but... When he was standing in for FaZe Katowice, he kind of switched that up and was actually playing uh, more of the entry roles. If we just take a look here, so this is uh, uh, FaZe's stats breakdown for their team from IEM Katowice. Uh, and we go across the players tab and we take a look at opening kills. As we can see, JKS was actually taking like roughly a quarter of their opening kills, uh, opening attempts even, and was having a pretty good success rate um, and had a really good entry rating. This gives me a lot more faith that G2 have made the right move because if you took this on the surface and we hadn't seen JKS put this performance up across a decent sample size of maps, 10 maps isn't too bad, um, a sample size across the tournament, I would have said that JKS was a little bit of a strange move because they were picking up another passive player. Um, Hunter is a relatively passive player. Monacy is obviously an AWPer. He's going to take um, some aggressive duels and some opening duels. But in general, with an AWPer, a lot of the time you've got to make sure that they are being set up and they are being kept alive and you're keeping that gun going in as many rounds as you can. So there is a limit to how aggressive I think an AWPer can be, particularly in terms of like opening duels and taking opening fights. And then Nico is kind of a player you have to let do his thing. Sometimes Nico is going to be like running up banana on Inferno and trying to get two solo entries. Sometimes Nico is going to take a little bit more of a slower pace in approaching a round. And he's one of the best players in the world. So you kind of got to let Nico do his own thing. So I was a little bit worried um, for G2 when I saw that JKS was coming into the team. Just because of that. In general, historically, JKS has been a passive player. He's been a player who maybe is more akin to the way Hunter has been playing in G2. So I saw for saw a potential role clash there. I also was a little bit surprised because it seemed like Complexity wanted a fee for JKS potentially. And that was probably the main reason JKS hadn't got a team up to now. This is speculation on my part, by the way. This might be total bullshit. But what I've heard combined with like using my own brain to figure shit out, um, it seemed like Complexity probably wanted a bit of a fee for JKS and that probably no one was willing to pay it. Like, JKS is a very solid player um, and he was pretty good during Katowice with FaZe and it definitely put him in the shop window. And I'm not surprised he's eventually got on a team because of that performance. But for sure, I think it took a lot longer than some people were expecting. And like I say, I would place a bet that Complexity maybe wanted a fee. And then recent developments with Complexity's current CSGO squad, where they're obviously looking for a replacement for Junior, um, and that's looking for an AWP replacement. So AWPers, especially NA AWPers, are pretty tough to find. So you're probably going to have to go international, probably spend some money relocating someone. So I think all of that in mind is probably why Complexity either dropped asking for a fee for JKS or were willing to take a much more nominal fee. I think they were probably just looking at getting his salary off the books. Um, I don't know how long his contract is. Maybe his contract's just coming to an end at the end of the year. And so with six months left, Complexity decided to cut their losses, take a small fee, whatever it is. But here we are. G2 have taken JKS. Some of the rumours that I have heard um, with regards to JKS on G2 um, is the fact that Hunter is going to start to play a little bit more of uh, an aggressive role. That A lot of the very lurk heavy roles that he has been playing has been because that's what the team needed. 
I don't know how much I necessarily buy that per se. Um, they, it's not as if G2 didn't have people on the team who could just kind of fill some of the bitch roles. I'm pretty sure Jax is just willing to do whatever he was told. Um, and I can't imagine Alexi B was necessarily like, hey, I need to be, you know, a star player or whatever. Maybe as an in-game leader, Alexi B wasn't willing to kind of be the lurks and be on the extremities of the map and he needed to be with the map control pack. Maybe, you know, that is a, an argument that I could see and, and take, yes. But I don't know, something rings a little bit weird about saying that Hunter only took all of these passive, very lurk-heavy roles um, because he was forced to, because that's kind of the, the kind of player I'd associated Hunter with being in the past anyway. And that he was like a bit of a lurk player, generally played on the extremities, generally had a little bit more of a slower pace passive style. But, you know, I digress, whatever. Maybe Hunter is going to start to take some more aggressive roles. As for the caliber of player that G2 are getting, JKS has throughout his career, um, if we just take a look here, he's been a pretty decent player all throughout his career. Obviously, uh, 2021 with complexity was a real low point and is an outlier. If you kind of look at the rest, um, of his stats he's kind of improving year on year and then his time with complexity um is understandably a bit of a letdown and being brutally honest complexity were in general that juggernaut project really poor um so i don't really lament jks and he was playing passive roles in a team that's performing poorly and you know it was a classic blame f show um blame f was taking all the best roles getting all the frags getting all the stats and then everybody else was left to kind of pick up the pieces um, and that team was just dysfunctional. It didn't work. It wasn't very good. So I take this particularly with a pinch of salt. I think if you want to see the prime JKS, you have to look at the year 2019. Um, a really, really solid rating just across all of the play. Obviously, I only played one game online, according to HLTV. But if we look at LAN, a lot of maps, um, you know, in general, a lot of maps, he's playing pretty well. Had a good major that year. Um, where Renegades placed top four. If we just have a look at his achievements as a player, um, we can see that JKS has had a decent amount of success throughout his career. His best year, like I say, was 2019 with this 100 Thieves slash Renegades, uh, the Australian squad plus JKM that had Liaz, Grass Faction, Azza, um, as well as JKM and um, JKS. So we've seen JKS definitely has the potential to play at the top echelons of counter-strike of course there's no questions about that and 2019 i think kind of showed proofing concept that with the right team around him he can be one of those kind of top players um he obviously made it onto the hltv top 20 for both 2019 and 2020 so jks as a caliber of player is definitely up there and is probably one of the best options that g2 could have picked up in this window um i'll take a a, a look over some of the other options that G2 probably had and were probably looking at and just some speculative ones that maybe would never have happened. But, you know, they were people that were on the market and definitely uh, available. All in all, I'm not sold this is going to be an absolute slam dunk, but I do think this is a positive signing. I think JKS is a good player. I think he seems like a great calming presence to have in a team. And I think a team like G2 that's lost Jax, who was supposedly very, very key as that calming presence. I think JKS will be a good personality fit as well for G2. And I think he's going to add a lot to the team, both on and off the server, in my opinion. Like I say, do I think this is G2 definitely going to be best team in the world now? No, probably not. Got to be perfectly honest with you. I still think there are some fundamental problems with the way G2 are with that core of Monacy. Um, I mean, mainly Nico and Hunter, to be honest, but also Monacy, you know, thrown in with that trio. There are some like problems that crop up again and again in G2's play, but and I don't think JKS will necessarily solve them. However, I do think this is a good signing. I do think this is a step in the right direction. If you look at him as a straight swap for Jax, 100% an upgrade. Even if you stick JKS in Jax's role, it's going to be an upgrade. And if getting Jax in allows them to kind of rejig the roles and rejig the chemistry of the team to fit the other players better, i.e. specifically Hunter, then I can see this being a pretty fucking good move. Mike, yeah, the boys, do a shoey. Now, the next player that G2 are supposedly getting is Hooksy in from Copenhagen Flames. Now, this is interesting. There were some other in-game leader names kind of on the market. 
Um, Tabson was a name that some people threw around, but I think that was always a, a pipe dream. Maybe G2 had a word with Big or with Tabson or whatever um, to see if that was possible. But I think that was always a pipe dream. I don't think Tabson's ever going to leave that big project. I think he's too invested into it. I think he's a key person who's built that big project from the ground up. I think he wants to be on a German team and try and have German Counter-Strike be relevant and be, be big within the scene. So, yeah, I don't think that was ever going to happen. Um, and obviously Snappy was the other name that was that was heavily linked with G2. That has ended up not happening. So here they have Hooksy. Oh, and Alex was the other name that was thrown around. But again, I was never really convinced by that rumor. Hooksy appears to be the man that they have settled on. Now, in terms of uh, as a player, who are they getting with Hooksy? Um, this is kind of... This was from Copenhagen's blah, 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 Copenhagen Flames run to the playoffs of the PGL Major Antwerp, the most recent Major. And this is what you get from Hooksy. You get pretty poor rating, pretty poor KD, um, you know, openings. He'll take a decent number of attempts. Um, he is definitely a player who is willing to go first to create space, to take room for the rest of his players to shine. But as you can see, his success rate is not very good in the opening duels. So what you're getting out of Hooksy is not a fragging in-game leader by any stretch of the imagination. However, in LXCB, he was replacing an in-game leader who was not a fragging in-game leader either. I would say overall, LXCB statistically is probably going to be a little bit better and a little bit more productive than Hooksy over the course of, let's say, six months. But, you know, LXCB, beautiful hair, beautiful man, not really a fragger. So in terms of as a straight swap for that, I'm not too fussed. Um, the other thing you can kind of see from Hooksy here is that he is very willing to throw lots of flashes and utility for his teammates. So Hooksy is a supportive in-game leader. That is what he does. That is what he is going to do. That is all good, all fine. I think that can fit as a piece of personnel. To quickly finish off this video, I want to do two things. Firstly, I want to pose my three big questions for G2 with regards to this swap. And they're kind of in order from least to most concerning in my eyes. So the first question I have of this new G2 roster is what is Hooksy's contribution going to be outside of calling? As I've shown you there previously, he is not a big fragger. He's going to be a supportive element. He's going to throw flashes, probably going to be going first a lot of the time to take space. Now, if he can just find a way to call effectively, create a good system within which the players can work, and also to use himself on the server to activate his stars, that is probably already enough. This is something I think Hooksy can do. This is the thing I am probably least concerned about. Also, 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 let's not forget... He's got the Danish IGL buff. What could go wrong? The next question I have is around JKS and Hunter being in similar roles, similar players, at least in my eyes. Now, I don't necessarily think this has to be a problem. On CT side, you need two anchors. So you need someone to anchor the big site. You need someone to anchor the small site between JKS and Hunter. They can do that. And then often on T side, you can work with two lurks. Um, they don't necessarily have to be aggressive lurks. They don't necessarily have to be passive lurks, depending on what you're doing on the map and what your end goal is for the round. So I don't necessarily see this will be a huge problem. Again, this is something I think G2 can work around and can solve. However, whenever a team has two players or is going to sign a player that I think is very, very similar to somebody they already have, I'm always going to ask the question, it's like, why? Why not get somebody who has different skills, can cover different aspects of the game? But in this instance, with the type of players they are, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be fine. The third question, and this is probably the question I have the most concerns about, is the chemistry between Hooksy and Nico. So what we have heard with regards to LXCB being kicked from the team is that the main reason is because LXCB, Nico, and Xtaz could not find a way to work effectively together. Now, um, this isn't necessarily something old with Nico. This isn't necessarily uh, old. This isn't necessarily something new when it comes to Nico. Um, we have heard supposed issues with his in-game leaders um, multiple times in the past. Um, you know, 
famously having Carrigan kicked from FaZe, supposedly. Uh, you know, you read into that what you will. Whenever a new in-game leader comes into a team with Nico, you are going to have to ask the question, will Nico respect him enough? Will Nico start overruling him? Will Nico lose faith in the guy as a caller and as a leader? That is a question that I don't think anybody can answer right now. I think that is very much going to be, let's see what the fuck happens. Who knows, man? Who knows? God Emperor Nico might just whoosh, swat Hooksy aside. Now, the other thing I want to quickly do is address some of the other rumors or people that were on the market for G2. The first one is Yekindar. So I heard that Yekindar um, or G2 considered Yekindar very early on when Yekindar became available. However, they came to the conclusions too expensive. And also at the time, I heard they were potentially thinking about sticking with their current roster for the next season. Um, obviously, they decided to twist in the end. Uh, not not twists, you know, stick or twist. All right, Google it if you don't understand. I think there is definitely an argument that Yekindar might have clashed with Nico in the same way that, you know, Nico has clashed with maybe some of his in-game leaders in the past. Yekindar seems very vocal, um, seems to like to take a lot of initiative, not just in the game, obviously, with the way he plays, he does do that. But I mean, outside of the game, telling people how to play, telling people how they should play, being like a leadership figure... So he's more likely to clash with Nico than, for example, JKS, who seems a very relaxed guy, very chilled, very willing to do what he needs to do to make the team work. Outside of that, I think he would have been a great fit stylistically and would have added firepower and made this G2 team so scary. Uh, you know, Nico, Yekindar, Monacy and Hunter. That is an outrageous four in terms of firepower. And I think really would have taken a lot of pressure off of whoever came in as an in-game leader. You don't have to frag at all when that's your kind of four players um outside of of yourself next was madden and snappy this was um these two are probably the most credible rumors uh that that went around um i think it seemed at the time like ents wanted to stay together originally that seemed to include sphinx however there's obviously been reports coming out that the sphinx move um progressed or at least the discussions did I think, honestly, if Entz were offered enough money and Sphinx was offered enough of a, a bump in salary, he probably has to take it. Um, you just don't know where you're going to be in six months if this Entz team, you know, is going to continue to be as good as they have been or are they going to stumble kind of like they did towards the end of the season? Um, however, I think this would have definitely been a stylistic fit. I think Madden would have been perfect for G2. Um, you know, send him in there ahead of the pack. Uh, on T side, let him entry, let him create space for Nico, Monacy, you know, whoever else is on the team, but particularly Nico for sure. Um, and on CT side, he's going to be willing to go out there and make some shit happen. And again, create space for his players like Nico, like Monacy to go out there and get the frags. I think Snappy would have been a stylistic fit in terms of calling as well. I think he could have called a more aggressive game style that maybe could have gotten more out of the star players than the way G2 have potentially played in the past. I don't think G2 have played a passive style in the past by any means. No, 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 no. But I just think the way Snappy styles giving uh, Snappy calls, giving his team, you know, the room to to make plays, I think it would have been a stylistic fit for G2. I, I think this would have been the coolest move, and this. I would have been gutted to see Ents split up. However, if they're going to lose Sphinx anyway, I would have, I would have wanted to see this move. I, I don't want, you know, that Ents team to just kind of rot because they can't get a good enough replacement for Sphinx. I would have rather had seen this happen. Um, and I think this could have been probably the best move G2 could have made. Next was Tabson. I think this was an absolute pipe dream. I don't think this was ever a credible or serious uh, rumor. Maybe G2 asked some questions of Big and Tabson. Maybe some discussions were have. I don't think that would have ever been serious. I think Big would have done anything they could to keep Tabson. So I think the desire from the organizational standpoint and being willing to put as much money on the table as they could to keep him, I think that would have happened. I don't think Tabson wants to leave that big project. I think he's very invested in it. He's built it from the ground up, basically, or been there as it's been built from the ground up. Him and Gobby are, are a tight pair. I think Tabson wants to be leading the forefront of German CS. So I just don't think this was ever going to happen. I think this was, like I say, absolute pipe dream. Regon, I think that was a pipe dream, but on the other way round, I don't think this was ever a serious rumor. I think this one was uh, some bullshit started by um, Loba. 
at least I think it was. I think he tweeted that him and Regon were joining as a joke, but then I think it ended up spawning a rumor that Regon might actually go to G2. Um, I just, yeah, just don't think that was ever credible. I'm not saying Regon's a bad player, not at all. Um, but I don't think he's got the profile to join a team like G2. I think G2, when they sign players, probably do think about brands and, and the commercial value of bringing a player on board. You know, I don't think Regon would have brought any commercial value, to be brutally honest. Um, and I, yeah, I just I don't think this was ever a serious rumor. Now, this Val one, I don't think I actually heard anyone say that G2 had had made any inquiries or thought about Valda. But if you're going to consider a player at like JKS, why not consider a player like Valda? I think the questions arise. Um, I don't know why I've got my headphones on. I think questions arise um, around whether there was a buyout there for Valda. Um, that might be putting teams off and a lot of teams might be saying, ah, screw it, just park him until the end of the season. And, you know, or whenever his contract runs out, I don't know the details on Valda's contract situation. But if you're going to consider a player like JKS, particularly stylistically, then Valda, I think, is a very similar player and definitely worth a consideration. Um, I think Valda, again, I would have the, the questions about whether he's too similar of a player to, to Hunter or at least wants to play the same sort of roles and stuff as Hunter. This one was just more of something I put in... Um, I I I want to know where Valda is going. Um, I've heard rumors um of EG, you know, still sniffing around slash Astralis. Obviously, EG have have not gone with it, and they've gone the route of Neelan and Masuta. What the fuck EG are doing with that roster? I haven't got a clue. You know, I tweeted about it. They could have signed fucking the dog from Up and and Gordon Ramsay, and the roster would have made more sense. But yeah, that one was more for me. I put this one on here because like, why, why, why not Valda? Why, why, why no one want Valda, man? What's going on? Is he like a buyout of a billion? What's happening? Someone, someone sign my boy. Someone rescue him from the bench. That's all for me, boys and girls. You know the drill. Like it, comment. Tell me what you want to see in future videos. Tell me what you liked or didn't like about this one. And if you did not like the video, jog on. Get out of here. Don't let the door hit you on the way out.